yeah, so we have a lot of uh, easy chairs in the collection and I'm not going to talk about all of them. I'm going to focus on the one you can see in Coco Shop, but this is called the Peacock. This is the folding chair, the, the Papa Bear, the upholstered Peacock, uh, the top chair, the, the web chair and PP 112 and the rocking chair and the circle chair. But you have to see where the inspiration came from for the peacock. It came from the Windsor style in the UK. And Wagner ended up making uh, the peacock chair in 1947. And he blew it up and made it very big, almost humoristic, but he took away a lot of the ornamentation and simplifying it, making it it's simple. And even today, it's very uh, relevant. Then in 1953, he made an upholstered version. And this was called the upholstered peacock because it's basically the same shape. So in the middle of the 80s, Wegner thought now P.P. Möbler need to have a rocking chair. And this is uh, him actually making his uh, prototype. Mm. Yeah, he also made in 1968 the web chair. But this is, of all the wing chairs we have, this is the most iconic, the Papa Bear chair. So this was produced by A.P. Stone, but they closed down in the mid 70s and the Papa Bear went out of production. So we asked Wagner, can we please put 100 pieces in production to celebrate our 50th anniversary in 2003? And Wagner said yes, but he wanted us to make our own upholstery because he knew that if we sent this out in town, they would put foam and he didn't want foam. He wanted organic materials. So one upholster takes 12 days to do in leather and fabric six days. So these are some of the materials we use. We use uh, linen for building up the walls and linen straps. We use uh, towel, we use horse hair, an animal, mixed animal hair mattress and springs, springs in the back. This is how it looks in the upholstery. So these are the big mattresses. So this is how it looks with the uh, towel shaping for making the arm. And that takes two and a half days just to do the arms. So you have to understand it's very demanding to make Papa Bear chair. And this is also why many in this industry choose to use foam because they, it's easy to get the shape so that they can get more staff fast, but we have to train them from anything three months to a year before they can do a Papa Bear themselves. So last year we had so many staff members on leave because of uh, illness or problem with their shoulders and arms because it's very hard. And we had to go out and create a stand where with a remote control, the staff can go up and down and tilt. And then we also have a physiotherapist who comes down and help them with proper uh, work positions so they don't get injuries. So it's tough to be a craftsman using natural materials. Yeah. So in 1954, Wegner designed the top chair. And the top chair was super difficult to produce because it's 11 layers of uh, plywood and it has to be double bent. So the shell was so difficult and it didn't have a, a very much success and they had to give up. So when we wanted to celebrate Wegner's 100th year anniversary in 2014, we borrowed a vintage model from Wyatt in New York so we could make, put it back in production. So. In 1986, Wagner launched the circle chair. And 
during his years, he did a lot of sketching with uh, involving uh, round shapes. He really liked the circle. So it's, it's a very difficult production process. Uh, here you see 3.6 meter long, perfect ash wood with no knots mm -hmm. for the circle chair. And we spent about two weeks to just cut the layers and we keep them together from the same tree. Mm -hmm. So we don't get miscoloring in, in the 11 layers. Yeah. So we developed a machine so we can actually keep it under pressure. If you are a good craftsman, you're also a lazy craftsman because the lazy craftsman will always try to find a way to do it smarter. And CERN, second generation, developed this machine so he could do it smarter. Uh, so this is Monica uh, doing a circle, 11 layers of wood. This machine here is actually high frequency electricity to dry the glue. So we can dry 11 layers in six, seven minutes. This is called a far day cage and it's picking up the noise from the electricity. But there's a lot of work afterwards. So we move on to the lounge chairs. This is of course the flag halyard, which is one of our best selling items. But I could understand that Coco has a passion also for the deck chair. And then we have the hammock chair, which I call our hip hippie chair because it has the long threads <laughs> hanging down. <laughs> but I have to talk one minute about the flag halyard because this is Wegner and he was a craftsman and he always worked in wood. And this is one of the few pieces not containing any wood at all. He got inspired from sitting on the beach, so he carved himself into the sand and then he went home and made it. Um, today it's made out of pure stainless steel and we use 220 meters of uh, flag line, which is uh, a linen with a nylon core inside. This is uh, the deck chest PP512 from 1958. And it's not really made for being outdoor. You have to take it in, but it has an adjustment here, similar to the top chair, but mm. it's inspired by some of the earlier Wagner models, the folding chair and the dolphin chair. So very typical Wagner. He took something from one model into the next. Mm. So you can see it's a very honest function. Normally, I think when you build in a function in a piece of furniture, it becomes very ugly. But mm -hmm. here it's so honest mm -hmm. and it's craftsmanship, it's the welder shop, it's a, a solid wood and the function is solved in a beautiful way, but he has used it in both models. Okay. And all the tables. I want you to understand that when we make a table, we always buy a 50 to 80 year old tree and we always use wood coming from the same tree for the tabletop. So this is table wood in the drying kiln and here you can see this sticking out. So this is from the same tree and this is from another tree. Mm. The reason why we do it, this is an old Andreas Tuck Wegner table, and you can clearly see that they come from different trees because they patinate unevenly. And this is why we do it the way we do it. This is the year we uh, actually relaunched the architect desk. And this is Bukowski in Stockholm. They thought they would sell for 100,000 Swedish. It ended up tripling and they got 300,000 uh, Swedish krona. And it said some slight wear and some harder wear to the drawers. So this is not an, a new table. And today, you know, they are made better because we use wood coming from the same tree. This is the PP75 table. 
And this is also the same. This is one, sometimes I walk through the workshop and I see something that's so extraordinary. I mean, this was just so perfect. Uh, all the tables are nice, but this was like, wow. You know, it was just so perfect. We have the cross leg table, which you can get with leaf painted. It's actually called Japan Red because vecna san was very big fan of Japan. And he traveled there with the uh, widow of Paul Kerholm, Henne Kerholm, and he uh, invented Japan Red in our collection. And um, I hope next year when he turn, he would have turned 100 that we can celebrate this color again, because it is really beautiful. So we are actually through now. Um, just some photos I took yesterday, just, you know, not a photographer, just me, a late afternoon. This is the wood cutting. These are arms for uh, the minimal chair, but it looks different every day. I mean, t yesterday there was not a lot of uh, big trees. It looks different every day. This is uh, in the steaming department. So this is uh, the steamer. So after it comes out of the steamer, we put it into this wood compression so we can reduce the wood uh, and then we can bend more precise This is a new CNC machine. Uh, we have three, but this is one we use for cutting the vertical bars for, for the 5868 chair. Yeah. Mm. This is uh, the assembly workshop. This is where the magic happens. This is where the pieces are put together. And this is the basement, the wood storage. There's a lot of value down here <laughs> where the craftsmen go down and handpick the pieces. But maybe we don't have everything to do a valet chair. Maybe we need to cut other pieces. So it's not everything is always there. So I always say, uh, if we change our suppliers, we change our staff, we change the materials we put inside our furniture or outside, it's a different product leaving the workshop. So we run, you can say a fragile production. Mm. So this is PP Möbler. We are defending the right to make good quality and at the same time being good ambassadors of the environment. That's it. It's a very good question. He, first of all, made extremely good drawings, but he also made uh, his own prototypes one-to-one -one. and I think maybe part of the success from that period could be the fact that they had very much in their hands not mm. so much on the computer oh, not on the computer at all so mm. they were more feeling the product in the process he almost he, he always brought a finished product but he had a lot of discussions with the craftsmen of course he had some that he preferred and he used our workshop mm -hmm. uh, for making many of his prototypes also uh, uh, models that went to other workshops and i can tell you that Eigner one time got very upset with uh, Wagner because he said to him Wagner you're copying yourself because you give me this model but you make another model that is similar. So, so they had a lot of discussions, but also a lot of admiration and understanding. And they always got good friends again. For me, um, it's it, for me it's a long process because I. I don't buy something without giving it a lot of consideration if I need it and if I can stand looking at it for, for years. But I'm also in the furniture industry, so I get a lot of uh, impressions, so it's easy to make fast decisions. But I like something that makes me feel good, that, I, that makes me happy and something that gives me the, the, the peace that, that I know I'm going to have it uh, the rest of my life. Um, but I have not always been in furniture industry. When I was younger, I, I had a lot of uh, fast moving furniture 
and I wish I had known what I know today because I would have saved a lot of money if I had bought good pieces from early age actually but it has to feel it has to be good seats and comfort that's important and durable for me uh, can I just show you um, I think this is very much the philosophy of Danish craftsmanship that uh, f also for PP Möbel and for me actually products that are made to last that you can pass on to next generation and that uh, can create hygge. I think it's important that you combine our furniture with your own styling. It shouldn't be a catalog. It shouldn't be something from a magazine. It should be your place. So your place could be an old painting. It, it could be pieces that mean something for you. So I think that's the Danish way of thinking that it has to be hyggeligt. <laughs> Hygge means cozy. It's a very, very, very good question. I mean, oh, and it's also a very big question because um, a lot of uh, manufacturers have been uh, buying uh, wood from Eastern Europe, among other Ukraine. And that has, of course, uh, put more attention on the Danish forest where wanting to buy uh, also from our supplier. So I'm very happy that we are very super close with our wood supplier and that we have not, that, that we don't buy from Ukraine. I mean, I think it's it's lucky that we buy from Danish forest uh, primarily. So one thing is the war in Ukraine. The other thing is that the Danish government have decided to take some of the forest away from, so you can't buy the trees. So if a tree falls, it will have to stay in the forest. So for the biodiversity. And at the same time, we also have an open market. So people from very far away uh, can actually buy our wood uh, without any tax or any. It, so, I mean, you can say it, it's it's very political right now because we have the, 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 the government and, and we have the war. Um, so it is very difficult uh, right now with the wood because they're changing the regulations in Denmark. We actually had the Danish television uh, here on Tuesday morning regarding the sh shortage on wood. Uh, so they were filming in our workshop and Casper, my boss, uh, third generation, um, is trying to, to connect with the politicians to make them realize it's it's a little bit silly because the Danish forest has always been maintained well and it um, it's the best material you can use because it's circular. It basically you can burn the wood and create new energy and, and plant new trees. So it, it so it makes no sense when you have a very healthy way of maintaining the forest to prevent us from if we have to buy from elsewhere in Europe, we have to transport in a truck, which will pollute, and it makes no sense. They should rather focus on private households and companies polluting, because the forest will always be sustainable. But the forest is, is not complaining. So that's why the forest is, is a, a victim here, you can say. So, so we have the war, but we also have the political uh, issues. But we have a good wood supplier, so don't worry. <laughs> yes. Thank you for your time and thank you for organizing. And, and I look forward, hopefully, meeting you in person one day. <laughs> mm. Thank you very much. Thank Sandy. you.